Welcome to the Personal Tutor Series Guide to SPSS 19. For those of you who've never used a Personal Tutor Series presentation before, the Personal Tutor Series aim to provide independent learning materials for those students who wish to develop key academic skills in their own time. These presentations are designed to be played whenever the student needs them and as often as they like. This particular series is going to focus on helping you master the SPSS software, that's the Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. If you've used one of our presentations before, you may want to skip over the next slide, which is mainly a guide to using the player. But if you've never used one before, hopefully this next slide will help you gain a better understanding of how these presentations work and how to control them. What you're hearing at this point now is uh, a replacement of the original audio for the recording at this point. Just to explain why it was necessary to replace the original audio. At this point in the recording, the original recording, it was talking about how to use the, the player, uh, which you were using to, to watch this. However, um, the software used to create the original recording uh, and the, the recording it created are now very much out of date, so we've, I've had to convert the original recording into a more updated version which you are now watching on your computer or device. However, the problem is that the controls for the original recording are still visible on the screen. Those are those little green controls at the bottom. Uh, you can see them sort of lighting up now. Uh, but those controls don't do anything anymore. You're, they're just sort of part of the image you are watching. Uh, you can still control your recording your device will give you its own controls or your computer will display separate controls to record what you're seeing or to sort of control what you're seeing uh, and so you'll still be able to do what you used to be able to do with the old uh, controls uh, pause the recording, skip forward, skip back, uh, control the audio um, which is very useful because obviously if there are particular parts of this recording you want to watch again and again or if you want to stop to sort of think about or make notes about what you're watching the controls will allow you to do that However, uh, they're not the controls, the green controls you can see on the, sc see on the screen, and so I've changed the uh, audio recording to avoid you getting confused about that. If you've never used SPSS before, then this uh, first presentation is aimed squarely at you to take you from the very first time you open SPSS and what you see across some of the basic controls that you'll use to manage SPSS and SPSS files. If you've used SPSS before, you may want to skip this presentation and move forward to one of the later presentations in this series. Here in this slide, you'll be able to see the five key steps of our current presentation. So we'll cover things like open an SPSS for the first time, um, the different menus you're likely to see, what the, um, how to manage uh, your files in SPSS, opening them and saving them, uh, what the variable and data tabs are and why they are important, and then finally, at the end of the presentation, and uh, you'll find at the end of all of our presentations, we'll give you some basic practice activities to do, exercises to test to see if you've clearly understood the points that have been made in the presentation and allow you to check your understanding. For each of these steps, there'll be a slide like this one and a short audio presentation. Following that, it will cut to um, a video presentation of someone actually using SPSS and you watching them use it and hear them talking about it as they use it. It's, if you've never used one of these before, it's a bit like looking over somebody's shoulder and watching them as they use the computer and listening to them, listening to them talk and tell you what they are doing. This way you get to actually see the things that we're telling you about in SPSS in action and hopefully this will make it easier for you to grasp those things when you try to do them for yourself. So without much further ado, let's move on to the first of these slides, which will look at opening SPSS for the first time. In this first step, we're going to look at opening SPSS as if for the first time. So we'll walk you through what the very opening screen looks like, what are the, some of the first basic choices you're asked to make and what they mean, and also where to find the various menus. Once we've done that, we'll move on to the next step, which talks about the menus themselves, what they contain, and how to use them. So let's have a look at what SPSS looks like when you open it for the first time. Right, what you're seeing here is the um, 
standard wizard that opens up when you open up SPSS for the first time. This is here to give you um, a choice of how you want to proceed from this point onwards. Do you want to start a brand new data file or do you want to open an existing one? Um, now if you're opening up SPSS for the very first time obviously you won't have any existing data files to open but later on in this series we'll talk about how you do open existing ones. Uh, for the moment, all you need to know is that the default option is to open an existing data source. And if you look over here on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that that radio button has been selected. And below that radio button is a window showing some of the files I've recently opened in SPSS and an option to select more files if I can't find the one I'm looking for there. But like I said, we're approaching this as if you're opening SPSS for the first time, in which case you're not going to be opening an existing data source you're going to create one from scratch. To do that, move your mouse here over to the right to the Type in Data radio button. Select that, and you'll now see that's highlighted. And then move down here to the OK button at the bottom of the screen and click OK. This then brings you into the main window for SPSS. And you'll find you do the majority of your work in SPSS through this window. Um, what you can see should be a fairly familiar layout for any of you who've used any Microsoft products like PowerPoint or Word. So you have the main screen here in the middle, which is where you'll be inputting most of your content. Directly above that, you'll see a series of large buttons, which represent quick buttons to access features that you'll tend to use a lot, like opening and saving. And then above that, you'll see a series of words which represent the different drop-down menus for the different functions of this program. Um, now you'll be introduced to each of these menus in more detail in the next step of the program. All you need to know to access any of these drop-down menus, you click on the word itself and the menu then drops down. To select anything, you move your mouse down until that option is highlighted. And then to move away if you don't wish to use that menu, you just click on the main screen again, the menu disappears. You can repeat this for any drop down menu until you find the one that contains the function you want. One thing you'll notice for a lot of these drop down menus is that some of the options have a little grey triangle beside them. So, for example, uh, merge files has here. And if you highlight that option, you'll see that the grey triangle indicates the presence of a sub menu. So it means that there are two submenus of the merge file category. One is add cases and the other is add variables. As I said before, this is a fairly familiar setup for any of you who've used um, any Microsoft products before, but uh, you should familiarize yourself with it then before moving on to the next slide. Now that you've seen the basics of SPSS, um, what it looks like and where the various things are. Let's focus on the menus specifically since the menus contain the majority of functions in SPSS that you'll want to use and learning to navigate the menus and find these various functions is one of the basic skills that you need to pick up early on to make an effective use of SPSS. So this next presentation you're going to watch will introduce you to the four menus that you're more likely to use than any others, the file menu, data menu, analyze menu, and graph menu. So what are these four menus? What do they do? Well, the first one of them is the file menu. You can find this at the leftmost of the different drop-down menus. It's a fairly familiar drop-down menu for anyone who's used Word or Excel before and contains options such as creating new files, opening existing files, or saving current files. You'll also find an option here at the bottom of this menu to open recently used files, which is a very helpful way of finding files that you've recently used but may not know where you've saved them. The second menu you're likely to use quite frequently is the data menu, which can be found here between view and transform. This contains a variety of functions which we're going to introduce later on in this series, mainly used to reorganize or in some way reconfigure the data that you've inputted into the um, main window. The third menu you're likely to use, and probably the one you'll use most frequently, is the Analyze menu. Now this contains a series of different types of statistical analysis. In fact, almost any kind of statistical analysis is accessed through this menu. 
and it covers everything from things like descriptive statistics down to correlations or even non-parametric tests. You'll find each of the individual statistical analyses is usually contained in one of the sub-menus of this main menu on analysis. The fourth menu you're likely to use quite frequently is the graphs menu, which as the name suggests is used for creating graphs. If you've used S one of the previous versions of SPSS, previous to the version 19, which is what we're looking at here, you may find that a lot of your familiar options from the graphs menu in those versions is gone. But they're not completely gone. You can still find the older menu options from the previous versions of SPSS here in what they call legacy dialogues, which is another way of saying these are the options we used to you offer you in previous versions of SPSS. And you can see all the different types of graphs and charts that you can create here, everything from bar charts all the way down to box plots. So learning to navigate these menus is going to be a key skill that you're going to use. And initially, you'll find yourself doing a lot of menu hunting, searching through the various menus to find a particular function that you're looking for. But after you've used SPSS for a while, it'll all become second nature, and you'll almost intuitively know which menu to go to find the functions that you need. Having looked at some of the most common menus you're likely to use, let's focus in on one of them, specifically the file menu, and let's look at the basic steps that are involved in either opening or saving uh, an SPSS data file. Right, so since we've got an empty data set here at the moment with no data in it, I think the first thing we need to do is look at opening a data file. To do that, we go up to the File menu here in the top left, click on File, and it'll bring up the drop-down menu. You can see that the standard options are there to create a new one or to open an existing one. So let's select Open here to uh, see if we can pick an existing data file that I've created earlier. Now one thing that you'll notice is that when you choose to either open or even create a new file, it's offering you four different types of file that you can open or create. These are data files, syntax files, output files, and script files. The two types of file you're going to use more often are the data file and the output file. A data file, as the name suggests, contains the data that you'll have inputted into SPSS previously that you're going to analyze. And then the output file will usually contain the results of the analysis that SPSS has carried out and essentially what it produces at the other end. Um, let's look at the data file that we're going to open. So I'm going to move across to select data. And when I do that, what should happen is that it'll bring up a small um, file management window. So you can see here that it's showing you a particular folder on my hard drive, the My Documents folder. And it'll show you any files that are suitable to be opened by giving those files the blue and red SPSS icon. The other thing that will identify a file as being suitable for SPSS is the, the suffix, the little three letters that come after the dot. Uh, for SPSS files, a data file will have the suffix .sav, and an output file will um, have the suffix .spv. So we want to open a data file, so we're looking for .sav files. You can see three of them here test data, test data 2, and test data 3. So I'm going to select test data, select open, and now you'll see that the uh, first thing SPSS does is it opens up an output window. And in this output window you'll see a few lines of text indicating that it has opened a particular file and which file it was and where on the hard drive it was. This is a function of SPSS that keeps track of all the files you open and close as part of an analysis, just so later on you can know which data file you were analyzing when you carried out a particular analysis. Now, if I then look at the uh, actual data window, you'll see that um, in the data window you can see now some data that I created earlier and saved as testdata.sav. So there are two variables visible here, gender and height, and I've recorded the data from 10 different participants and input it in the data file. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a small modification to the data and then save it again. To do that, I'll just 
click on this box here and change 131 to 130. And then now that I've got what I think is the correct data, I can save it again. And to do this, I go up to File. And this time I can either choose Save, which will essentially overwrite the existing data file with the new data. Or if I'm not sure that I want to overwrite the existing file, I can Save As, which will allow me to change the name of the file I'm saving, thus leaving an existing file which isn't modified and creating a new file which contains the new data. But I'm pretty sure this data is correct, so I'm going to select Save. And now that data is saved with that data file name, testdata.sav, and I can shut down SPSS and come back to it later and reopen the data, and it'll all be there. Having looked at our first data file in the previous step in this presentation, one thing that may have occurred to you is that we saw two variables and we saw some data being entered, but you may have raised the question, well, how did we decide what those variables were going to be called and how did we decide that one of the variables would have certain labels attached to certain values? To understand how things like that are entered, the next thing we're going to look at are the data view and variable view tabs at the bottom of the screen. This will help you understand where it is you enter data and where it is you define variable characteristics. So here we are again with our um, test data. And as you can see, we're now looking at the data window or the data view window. You know it's that one we're looking at because down here in the bottom left hand corner, data view is highlighted in yellow. When you're looking at the data view, it is allowing you to then enter the actual data itself, so input the actual numbers that you've recorded from your participants. But before you can do that, you'll need to set up the various variables that are going to contain these numbers to give them names and characteristics. To do that, you're going to need to select Variable View. This is the option beside Data View, and to select it, I just click on it once. Now Variable View is highlighted, and you can see that the window has changed. Previously, if we just go back to data view for a moment, previously you'll see that each column here represents a variable. So there's one column representing gender and a second column representing height. And each row represents a different participant, a different person in our study. So row number one, which I'll highlight now, shows you one person who took part in their study, what their gender was, what their height was. If I go to variable view again, you'll see now that certain things have changed. Here, each row represents a different variable, and each column represents a different characteristic about that variable. At the moment, you can see the first row represents the gender variable, and I've given it a name, gender, and I've also given it a width and certain values. Now, we'll be explaining in later presentations how you enter these and how you make the decisions. But all you need to know for the moment is that when you're looking at the data view window, each column represents a variable, and each row represents a participant. But when you're looking at the variable view window, here each row represents a variable, and each column represents a characteristic of that variable. Uh, at this stage, we've introduced you to all of the basic functions of SPSS that we think you need to know for this presentation. And so this final slide here contains some simple activities which you can use to test your understanding to see if you've followed all the different instructions and information that we've given you so far. You can see three activities listed here on the slide. The first one is mainly focusing on having you uh, create a new data file for the first time and save it. The second activity is about opening that data file again, uh, or rather locating it and then opening it. And then the third activity is primarily about doing a bit of menu hunting, searching through the different menus to find some of the different functions which we've listed here. What we suggest you do is to um, pause the presentation at this point after I finish talking and then open SPSS yourself and try to complete these activities. When you've done that or you've gotten as far as you can with the different activities, watch the rest of this presentation and see if what you got right, or if you found you got stuck at any point, to see how it should be done. So if you're ready, please pause the presentation now. 
If you're hearing this, hopefully you'll have completed the activities and you're now ready to see how the correct answers should appear. So without much further ado, let's go on to the uh, presentation to see how each of those different activities should be completed. Okay, so for this first activity, it's asking me to open up a blank data set in SPSS and just input any data at all in order to be able to have a data file to save. So here's the standard wizard you see when you open up SPSS. Since I'm going to want to create a blank data file to enter the data, I'll need to select Type in Data here on the right-hand side and click on OK. Right, so that brings up the um, data window. And in order to input any data, I just choose one of the data cells. I'm going to choose this one in the top left-hand corner. I'm going to type in the number 12, not because it has any meaning, just to have something in there. And now I can see that that has created a, a new variable called var0001, because I haven't given it a name yet. And one line, the first participant of my program, with the number 12 in that for variable. Now that I've got that random piece of data in there, let's save it. To do that, I go up to the File option here. I'm going to choose to Save As, so I can give my data file a name. When I do that, I get this standard file management window pops up, giving me a view of my hard drive and a chance to give my file a name. At the moment, it's given it the default name of Untitled1, because um, it doesn't know what name I want to give it. So. I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to call it, rather imaginatively, test data 5 to follow my existing naming scheme. I click on Save, and what happens then is that an output window pops up, and this is just telling me that I've just saved a file, and it's told me the name and the location of the file I've saved. Right, so that ends that particular activity. In the next activity, I'm being asked to close down SPSS completely and reopen it and find the file I've just saved. So let me do that first. So I'm just going to close these various windows. It usually gives me a few options to save things before I close them down. I, I don't want to save that output window. It doesn't have anything I need. And I'm going to close down this data window. And it's saying, you know, are you sure you want to do that? I go, yep, definitely, I want to close it. So now that I've closed down SPSS, um, you can see my lovely desktop. So let me open up SPSS again so that we can uh, start from scratch. So SPSS is opening up. My computer is thinking about it. Um, I could hum some hold music now if you like, but you probably don't. So let's just wait a second or two until the um, opening wizard pops up with my standard choices. Now, there it is. Now, in this activity, activity number two, I want to open an existing date file, the one that I've created previously. Now, if you remember, this option here on the left, open an existing data source, allows me to uh, look through data that I've recently created or worked on to see if I want to reopen any of those files. At the moment, you can see just the first part of the location of each of these files, so I'm going to need to take this menu bar here and scroll it across. Sorry, let me make that a little bit clearer. So this scroll bar here at the bottom allows me to move back and forward to see the complete name of each data file. And there you can see test data 5. So if I select that and click on OK here at the bottom, that would open up the uh, data file. Another way to do it would be to select more files if I click on OK, what happens then is I get my standard file management window. It's showing me the My Documents folder. I can select Test Data 5, which is the one I've just created, click on Open. And firstly, I get the standard output window telling me you've just opened this file. And if I then maximize the data window, there is my not particularly interesting data set of one variable for one participant. But that at least walks you through how to open a file you've previously created. The third activity is doing a bit of menu hunting, looking for three particular functions. The first one is weight cases. Well, you'd find that one in the data window. It's there at the bottom, weight cases. So let's look for the second one we've been asked for, correlate. Well, 
all forms of analysis are in the analyze menu so let's pull that down and there is correlate with three submenus bivariate partial and distances and the third thing you've been asked to find is an error bar graph so I go to graphs click on or go down to legacy dialogues and here near the bottom is error bar hopefully you were able to find all of those different functions and different and complete those different activities if you had difficulties with any of them we suggest that you might want to replay certain parts of this presentation until you feel you're very confident in using the various menus of SPSS and some of the basic file management activities when you think you've got these skills mastered it's time then to move on to the next of these presentations in SPSS the uh, next one which will be uh, dealing with um, the area of um, entering data into SPSS and more complete instructions on how to uh, define variables.